Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Z Learning yet again here at Riverbanks Zoo and Garden. My name is Milo, and today we are inside one of our habitats here at Riverbanks. In fact, we are deep inside of our Riverbanks Conservation Outpost. Now, I know on Monday of this week, we kind of toured around, we went through the public area, so that way we were looking through the glass viewing area. But today we are truly inside Keeper View, directly in with one of our animals. Now you saw the post yesterday afternoon that teased out who we are hanging out with today. We are going to meet Coco Joe. Yes, you heard right, Coco Joe, our two-toed sloth here at Riverbanks. But I have to say a big, huge good morning, everybody. Sarah, good morning. Ella, Mariana, Jane, nice to see you tuning in. And Sunshine, good morning, everybody. And welcome to Z Learning. Today is a very exciting day because I can now officially say Riverbanks is opening up again. We are reopening this Saturday morning at 9 a.m. If you haven't heard about that yet, when we're all done at Z Learning today, I encourage you to check out our video that we posted yesterday, late last night, and check about how we are ready for all of you to show about all those different precautions we are taking. So everybody, good morning. It is so nice to see all of you. And today, like I said, we are not really behind the scenes, but we are inside one of our animal habitats, specifically with our two-toed sloth. Now, don't expect a whole ton of action today. We're not gonna be doing a whole lot of movement. In fact, we're gonna be hanging out in one spot, going sloth speed, let's say. But I'm not in here by myself. You notice my mask is up, we're in an animal area, so I have our PPE on but I'm also joined by one of my friends, Laborde, who's actually a mammal keeper here in this area, specifically with the small mammals and the gorillas. But Laborde here in a second is gonna tell us more about Coco Joe and all about two-toed sloths. Now I know we've been getting a lot of requests for sloths, so all of you who wanted sloth time, this is for you. But it is so great to see all of the excitement for reopening. I know we've had a bit of technical difficulties online, but you know what? That's because all of you are flooding our website with all of your excitement to come to Riverbanks again. So we cannot say thank you enough. So let's go ahead. We're going to kind of make our way over, kind of duck my head. And I want to go ahead and turn around this camera real quick and say, good morning, Laborde. Nice to see you, Laborde. Good morning, everyone. So we are going to get a closer look up here at our two-toed sloth. Now, Coco Joe, like I said, is hanging out up here. And we are gonna get a really nice close view. Everybody who is so excited for sloths, this is it. So Laborde, tell us a little bit more since you're gonna be kind of behind the camera with me today as we get a really close up view. What are we feeding Coco this morning? So we're feeding him some uh, boiled vegetables. It's uh, part of his favorite, part of his diet. Um, he likes to eat uh, lettuce, grapes. Uh, we like to boil some of the vegetables just to uh, make sure he's, uh, you know, get an eye on them. That is, you can even hear him too. <laughs> Hopefully you can hear him munching on his, his boiled veggies this morning. I did see a couple of questions come in. Look at that sweet face this morning. Folks were wondering, is, does this mean this is our last Z-Learning feature? It does not. Do not worry. Z-Learning is not going away for the foreseeable future. We're going to continue to bring our zoo our animals and our plants to all of your homes, even as we reopen this weekend. So Laborde, it looks like, was that a carrot that you just snuck in there? What are we eating? Uh, we have carrots, um, some cucumber, and some uh, squash as well. Oh, so he's having a really healthy snack. Yeah, he's now, very healthy. Now we mentioned that you boil them. What's the reason for actually boiling those veggies for him? So it's a little bit softer and easier for him to eat. Sure. Um, so we don't, you know, he doesn't have to crunch on it too much. Well, and since you mentioned that, how old is Coco Joe? Coco Joe is 21 years old. Um, most okay. sloths live 20 to 30 years old, so he is definitely an older individual. We'll slide in another carrot. So in his older age, it's nice to obviously have softer foods. Just like some of you who might be really young, you like to chew on softer foods. Or if you know anybody in your family that gets a little older, it's a little easier to digest something that's a little softer, smushier. But inside of his mouth, I don't know if we're gonna get a good view, but sloths actually have really, really sharp teeth. But a lot of you are asking in so many great questions, and you can see Coco Joe, oh, there, you might be able to see one of his teeth there real quick. He's having some of that cucumber. Oh, there you go. <laughs> 
Oh, Andrea, what a great question. Are there other types of sloths that have more than just two toes? Yep, there are uh, six subspecies of sloths. Um, he's part of the two-toed family. Yeah. The other family is the three-toed. They all have three toes on the back of their, on their back feet. Yep, yep. Um, but the difference is with these, they have two toes on their front. So hopefully you can see those claws up over his head this morning. Maybe I'll kind of zoom in just a little bit over Coco Joe. You can see those two cute little well, they're actually not that cute. And they're really not that little. I shouldn't have even said either one. They're pretty long compared to their body. In fact, they're great for hooking on and gripping onto those branches because sloths spend all their time up in the trees. They are hanging out up off the ground. But that's a great question, Andrew. I'm glad you asked that because three-toed sloths are something that you might commonly see, say, maybe in photos or videos online. Um, but two-toed are the ones that we care for here at Riverbanks. <laughs> Being a little shy. Somebody's just a tiny bit shy, a little sleepy. You might notice in our caption this morning, sloths sleep for about 15 hours every single day. So Coco Joe is typically more of a nocturnal animal. So we're doing a kind of early morning breakfast with him this morning. Um, but I did notice a question I missed who had sent it in. Somebody was wondering if we touch our sloths. Laborde, tell us a little bit more about how you interact with and care for Coco Joe. Uh, so we try not to touch them too much if we need to get their attention and maybe wake them up to give them up for breakfast. Sure. Um, other than that, we try to, you know, more hands off, um, just let them, let them hang in the trees without us interfering. Yeah, absolutely. Now that's such a great example too, because Coco Joe, even though obviously we're in direct contact with him, he's not considered one of our highly dangerous animals. They're still wild animals. They still have really sharp teeth. And even though sloths are pretty slow going, Coco Joe can be pretty quick if he wants to be. He's checking out that camera. He's wondering what's going on. <laughs> now, you also might notice a lot of you are commenting in with how pretty Coco Joe looks. Oh, gosh, all that drool that just slipped yeah. out of his mouth. <laughs> he has a very kind of sandy blonde appearance, kind of has that pretty tan color. I guess I'm a little biased. I think he's a good looking guy. But what is so unique about their hair, Labor? Tell us a little bit more about this fascinating hair. So the way their fur grows, it grows the opposite direction that most other mammals have with fur, and that's because they hang upside down. So uh, they come from a rainy environment, um, so the rainwater kind of just whisk off of them rather than pooling on them. Um, huh. So since they're up in the trees all day, they don't want to, you know, obviously have just water pool on them all day. <laughs> yeah. Another cool thing is their hair is designed to have algae grow in it. And um, that helps them sort of camouflage. So when they're up in the tree, they're not moving a lot and they blend in. It's harder for, say, a harpy eagle or a jaguar to spot them. That is such a good point. So when you wake up and try to fix your bedhead in the morning, everyone who's tuning in, you probably figure out where your part is. You make sure your hair's looking good. If you were looking for the part on a sloth, it's actually going to be on their belly. It's not on their back or on the top of their head where you might assume. It's actually on their belly. So that way, like Laborde said, it grows down so it can kind of drip off almost like a roof line <laughs> like gutter almost so that way it doesn't retain all that water and instead falls off of them now i did catch a question let me find it we were wondering how did he get his name zoe and joshua were wondering how coco joe got his name well coco hasn't always lived here at riverbanks in fact, Laborde was mentioning before we got started this morning, Coco was actually born at the Houston Zoo, then he moved to another zoo in Kansas, and then eventually moved here. So for whatever reason, Coco Joe was the name they selected down in Houston, Texas, but he was born in an accredited zoo and then came to us on a breeding recommendation specifically. Now, Laborde, you were mentioning that sloths are pretty solitary animals. Can you tell us a little bit more? What does solitary mean? What what do they do then? So they typically like to hang out by themselves um, sure. in the wild. The exception would be a mother with a baby or if they want a mate. Mm -hmm. um, generally in the wild, they're gonna stick to their own tree. Um, they can't live in the vicinity of other sloths. They don't get really too territorial like that. Yeah. But uh, generally they just like to hang out by themselves. So Coco Joe really doesn't mind kind of having his own place right now, um, hanging out kind of in his bachelor pad, let's call it. <laughs> But no, we don't have any baby sloths right now here at this time. I do apologize though. Some of you are mentioning that we're kind of glitching. I will say we don't maybe have the best service here in Riverbanks Conservation Outpost. Um, but I've also noticed a question coming in, Gracie specifically asked it, of how slow do sloths move and why do they move so slow? Well, one of the unique reasons why is sloths have a very slow metabolism. It's actually one of the slowest metabolisms in the mammal family. 
In fact, even though you feed them every single day, correct? He That's gets an right. everyday meal. It's very low in nutrients, which is very similar to what they'd eat out in the wild. But tell me a little bit more. They have also a kind of a claim to fame labord, their body temperature. So their body temperature is much lower than uh, other mammals. It can be below 90 degrees. Whoa. And it takes a lot of energy to get your core temperature up. Mm -hmm. And since they're already not eating a lot, not moving a lot, and sleeping all the time, it helps them. It's just another way to help them save energy. So they have a very cool body temperature, you could say, which is shocking, but a good adaptation because they're typically found in the central... American and South American rainforests where it's pretty darn warm and they don't need to warm themselves up. But since that low body temperature means that they don't have to use a ton of energy and resources to stay warm. Tara Lynn, great question. Do they always get hand fed or does he have to, in quotes, hunt for his food? Well, sloths don't go hunting unless you consider hunting for fruits or leaves to be hunting. Maybe it's more browsing through. But hand feeding them, is, is that an everyday thing or is it special for us for Z-learning? So we like to hand feed them in the morning just to get an eye on them since, you know, they are very, they're going to be sleeping a lot of the time. Sure. Um, but we also put some of their, most of their food out on trays. Um, yep. So we hand feed them some. <laughs> yep, he's... Dropped a little. <laughs> he's not always the, the cleanest eater. Um, so we hand feed him a little bit just to get an eye on him, make sure, you know, he's, you know, awake and, you know, see how he's doing. Absolutely. Well, and Laborde, whatever goes into a sloth does eventually have to come out. That's right. And that slow metabolism means that they have a very slow digestive tract, too. In fact, some cases, depending on what they're eating out in the wild, it can take them up to a month to fully digest whatever nutrients they have in their stomachs. But Laborde, something very special happened last night. What was our big surprise that y'all woke up to this morning? Uh, he actually pooped. He pooped <laughs> once a week, which is uh, pretty normal for him, which makes us the uh, easiest exhibit to clean in the entire zoo. <laughs> that is such a good point. Okay, so those of you who missed that, sloths poop once a week, which means that they don't defecate nearly as often as other animals. Now, I apologize in advance. Those of you who don't want to see this, but I was too impressed here. We're gonna actually crawl down here real quick. We're gonna get Coco a quick break. Laborde went ahead and texted me this morning and said, hey, Coco Joe pooped this morning. Do you want us to keep it out? And I said, absolutely. He must have known that it was his feature today. <laughs> now I'm not gonna necessarily zoom up and just talk about sloth poop. But what is so amazing about this is they only poop once a week. I'm going to say it again. Can you imagine that? It's not because he's constipated or anything like that. They only poop once a week because of that slow metabolism. Now, what's even more fascinating is they don't go to the bathroom up in the trees. They climb all the way down to the forest floor and poop down there. <laughs> now, part of the reason why they do that is so that way predators don't find them. They leave their droppings down on the forest floor and then crawl back up where they're safe away from those predators. But I had to zoom in since Laborde was so on top of things this morning, they decided to not clean up this area this morning and save it for all of you to see for Z Learning. So I can only imagine y'all are saying thank you at home because you definitely wanted to see this once a week treasure that Coco Joe left for us this morning. <laughs> oh, I love that. Caitlin says it's Coco Joe's um, cocoa beans. <laughs> All right, everybody, let's go ahead and take another quick peek up at Coco Joe. He's still kind of hanging out up here. Looks like he's kind of resting. Oh, we had a question of how long does it take him to crawl down? Laborde, he's not a very quick animal, so does it take him a good long time? Uh, not too long, probably just a couple of minutes. Sure, so he's not necessarily super fast and zippy, but it doesn't take him forever to get down there, of course. It just takes a whole lot of energy, too. But it looks like Coco is going to kind of maybe rest a little bit. He might poke his head out a little bit. I don't know if we have too much food left, Laborde, but maybe he's interested in having a little bit more snacks this morning. Oh, I apologize. I missed whoever donated this morning, but we've already raised $40. Thank you to whoever donated to support Riverbanks. That is so very sweet of you. I was way too busy looking at Coco Joe's poop this morning. I am so sorry. Oh, one more time, Laborde. Remind us how old he is. Ella was wondering. He is 21 years old, and he's got a birthday coming up in August. Oh, so happy early birthday, Coco Joe. It's kind of early. It's going to be in August. 
but he is 21 years old. Oh, Faith, great question. What are their predators out in the wild? So Since they're hanging out in those trees, what might snack on them? Go ahead. So uh, eagles uh, can definitely be dangerous since yeah. they're up, in the, up in the, uh, near the canopy, uh, as well as jaguars, ocelots, and even anacondas. Wow. Uh, but what they do is they like to, they, when they go high up, they can usually avoid most of the predators. And sure. as far as eagles, they usually can blend in and not move a lot. So that kind of helps them. Yeah. yeah. That's where that algae comes into play too. So that algae that grows onto their fur helps them blend in with their environment. Plus, holding still definitely helps too. You kind of go unnoticed. Oh, by the way, that donation was from Zoe and Joshua. Thank you all so much. I'm glad that you mentioned that. Big, huge thank you from Laborde, myself, and Coco Joe this morning. Now, Laborde, remind us, how long is a typical sloth lifespan? About 20 to 30 years. Gotcha. Okay, so Coco Joe is definitely considered an, an older individual. Right. And speaking of, we're going to let Coco Joe kind of go back to bed. We're going to kind of <laughs> give him his personal space. It looks like he's done with breakfast here this morning. But before we say a complete goodbye, I want to give a big thank you to, of course, Laborde for joining us here this morning. Thanks so much, Laborde. We couldn't have done this without you, of course. Now, let me go ahead and turn around this camera quick because I wanted to give out a big thank you once again to all of our Riverbank supporters. If you haven't heard the good news, we are reopening. We are so excited to say so. And on Saturday morning, we will reopen to the public. So check out riverbanks.org and click on that important message tab. that will give you all the information that you need as far as ticketing is concerned and all the precautions that we're taking to safely reopen to the public. Now, all the questions that are continue to come in, I apologize we didn't get to everybody's great questions. We got some big sloth fans out there, but we'll remember that for next time because, like I said earlier, Z learning is not going away. We are not done with it quite yet. We still have lots more that we are very excited to share with all of you. In fact, tomorrow morning, join me at 10 a.m., and we're gonna hang out with those crazy lorikeets. Again, it's been a while, and we're going to actually join them for a very special feeding session tomorrow morning to kick off our weekend on Friday at 10 a.m. We will see you all then, and in the meantime, have a wonderful day. Thanks, everybody.